Question one then. A line is perpendicular to this one. What's the gradient? Well, perpendicular means you get the gradient of this line and then the negative of the reciprocal. So the gradient of this line, I'll need to make it y equals. I'll take the 3y over there and read it that way. So that'll be 2x minus 6, not that 6 matters. So y is going to be 2 thirds of x, and that bit doesn't really matter, because I can see straight away now the gradient is 2 thirds. <coughs> so the perpendicular gradient will be whatever that multiplies by to give negative 1, which will just be the negative of the reciprocal of it. So negative 3 upon 2. Negative 3 upon 2 is answer A. Number two, a reconciliation, it gives you an initial value and you have to find one that's a couple further on. So you just go through that pattern. That quite clearly says you want the one after this one. Remember, <coughs> that could have said n minus one and that could have said of n, it had no effect at all, as long as that says it's the one after that one. So u1 is simply going to be <coughs> two times the previous one plus three, that's five. u2 is going to be two times the previous one plus three, that's 13, so that's answer C. And for question three, given these two vectors, find three of the first, take away two of the second. Now since the answer's here, you could only check, you don't need to check a couple of them. You could check the top line. Three twos, take away two, and then compare it with which ones are which. That knocks out a couple. But I think I'll just set it all out. So I've got three times two, o, one, take away two times negative one, two, four. So that's going to give me three twos are, three twos are six, plus two is eight. Three nothings are nothing, take away four is minus four, which is probably enough to identify it. There's the only one that does that is D, so I could just stop there. I'll do the last one just as a check, in case there was a mistake. Three ones are three, minus eight is minus five, and it's still that, D. Right, question three. Question four, a trig graph. It gives you the form of it. <coughs> it tells you that it's cos, but you knew that anyway because it started at the top. It's just what's A and B? A is the amplitude. How much has it been expanded? It should have gone up one down one. It's gone up two down two. So A is two. So it's two cos. B, the wavelength. It's been compressed. There isn't just one wavelength by two pi. There's one, two, three wavelengths. So two cos three x, which is answer A. Question five. When this quadratic is written into that form, in other words, complete the square, what's the value of q at the end there? Well, complete the square. So x plus half of that is four. We'd form the proper square, x squared plus eight x, but that would add a 16. So subtract the 16, and the three was sitting and waiting, so that makes minus 13. So that q must be minus 13, which is b. Six. Another quadratic, quadratic equation, the roots of this equation are equal, discriminant should be zero. So I want b squared minus 4ac to equal zero. Well b that's negative three, square it, that's nine. Take away four times k times two, and that should equal zero. So I've got nine minus eight k equals zero. So I'll just take that over eight k and read it that way. Eight k equals nine, which means that k equals nine divided by eight. 9 divided by 8, that's D. Number 7. Another reconciliation, this time it says, what's the limit? We just use that formula. Limit's going to be B over 1 minus A. 7 over 1 minus a quarter. <coughs> 1 minus a quarter is 3 quarters. Multiply both parts by 4 to go to the fraction. 20 upon 3. 20 upon 3, that would be C. So number eight, there's a circle sitting on the axis here. The equation, first thing you do with that is you get the, the centre. Negative a half of that, negative a half of that. So the centre's at three, five. And it says, what's the equation of this line? Well, three, five means three along five up. So that distance is five. So that's a circle, so it must be five again. So that's up at 10. So the equation must be y equals 10. y equals 10, answer B. In number nine, 
integrate this. Well, there's two parts to it, but you can treat them separately, so let's forget that bit, do the first bit. That's an ordinary term in X, so it's just add one to the power. Negative four, when you add one, goes to negative three. Then divide by that negative three, so dividing by three and making it negative. So I've got that for the first term. Cos, that came from sine. Sine produces ordinary cos, so that's still positive. So that's plus sine of the thing it's acting on, but that's a linear term. If you were differentiating it, you'd have multiplied by the derivative of that. You'd have multiplied by 5. You're integrating, so you do the opposite. You divide by 5. I'd rather just squeeze that in there, so plus a fifth of that. And then, of course, plus the answer. <coughs> Sorry, plus the constant. So that makes the answer for that part negative 2 thirds C. Number 10 it gives you two vectors written in terms of multiples of the unit bases vectors, i, j, and k. It says the perpendicular, perpendicular, scale of product zero. But first of all, I'll sort them out properly. That first one is x, 5, 7. And this one is negative 3, 2, negative 1. <coughs> and I want the scalar product of that to come to zero. So that means multiply them together. I'll put a dot there, but they should have been closer together. So that's going to be negative 3x, multiplying those two, plus 10, multiplying those two, minus 7, multiplying those two. So I've got negative 3x, oops, plus 3. And if they're perpendicular, that should come to 0. That means that 3x equals 3, so x equals 1. x equals 1 means you've got the answer B. So for question 11, uh, function of a function, here's the two functions, f and g, cos and x plus pi upon 6. What's the value of f of g of pi upon 6? Well, what does g do, first of all, and then let f act in its result? Well, g does this to anything it gets hold of, it takes it and adds on pi upon 6. So if you put a pi upon 6 into it, you'll get a pi upon 6 out plus another pi upon 6. So pi upon 6 plus pi upon 6 is the result of that. That's what f's got to act on. A sixth and a sixth, that makes a third. So I've got pi upon 3. And f does the cos of whatever it gets hold of. So I want cos pi upon 3. <coughs> well, what's pi upon 3 in pounds, shillings and pence? <coughs> That's going to be 3 into 180 is 60 degrees. So you'll have to remember your 60 triangle, your 60-30 triangle. Shorter side 1, longer side 2, that side's root 3. Cosine, the adjacent side, the cosine is 1 upon 2, so that's going to be a half. And a half is, answer, D. And number 12, if f of x is this, what's f dashed of x? Well, before you differentiate it, get it into index form. Put the x up to the top, so it's going to have a negative power. The fifth root means you've got a 5 in the denominator of the index, power 1 root 5. And then differentiate the normal way, which is multiply by the power. So negative fifth, fifth times it, take one off the power. Now taking away a one is equivalent to taking away five fifths. You've got negative one, take away another five, so it's negative six fifths. So for that one, negative a fifth, negative six, fifths, that's A. Number 13. Generalised quadratic formula, <coughs> and it gives you a couple of facts about it, and you've just to think, what does a graph look like? Well, the three things in those, the three parts of that, do the following. The a, the coefficient of x squared, tells you which way round it is. If it's a positive, it means it's this way round, heading to the positives. If it's a negative, it goes upside down. The c tells you where it cuts the y-axis, because that's all you're left with. Ooh, that was handy. If x is 0. And the B in the middle goes in conjunction with the A to shift it side to side. If they've got the same sign, then the turning point will pass to the left. If they've got opposite signs, it'll pass to the right. But that's all the information we're given. The discriminant then tells you how many times it's going to cut the x-axis. <coughs> if it's zero, it'll cut it once, a bit of tangent. If it's more than zero, it'll cut it twice. And if it's less than zero, it won't cut it at all. So putting that together, what have we got here? A is greater than zero means it's going to be <coughs> a 
positive shaped one. The discriminant being greater than mirror means it's going to cut twice. I haven't got any other further information, so I don't know which side it passes to, but I know it's going to look like that. So which one might look like that? The only one that looks like that is B, because it's the right way around and it cuts the x-axis twice. Right, number 14. There's a graph, these two equations, what's the shaded area, the area between the two curves? Well, it's going to be the integral from where it starts to where it finishes using the x coordinates and it's not those y coordinates, so it's going to go from negative 2 to 2, so that knocks out a couple of them, and it has to be the top, take away the bottom. You know, the top is the 14 minus x squared. So 14 minus x squared formed the top of it, and the bottom is actually this one over here minus 2x squared plus 2. So that would be it. Just tidy that up. Because that's going to be 14 take away 2 is 12, minus x, minus 2, minus 3x squared dx. And that's answer C. Although you could probably have identified it without doing Right, number 15. What multiple selection question? You're given this function. In fact, you're given its derivative. And I just ask, is it increasing, decreasing, stationary? So it's the derivative you want. The sign of the derivative will tell you whether it's going up, that's positive. Stationary, that's zero. Or decreasing, that's negative. At x equals one. So you just try one at a time. So x equals one. One squared is one. Take away nine comes to negative eight. Now negative eight means it's heading down. It says it's increasing. So that statement's false. x equals negative three. Well, negative three squared is nine. Nine minus nine is zero. That means it's horizontal, that means it's stationary, so statement 2 is true. So 1 is false, 2 is true, C, only statement 2 is true. Answer is C. Number 16. Right, here's a graph, it's a cubic graph with these two turning points, x squared times x is x cubed x cubed should look like that. This is upside down, so it's negative, so I know that k is negative. And the other thing is, it's been factorised, so these two numbers here should have come from these factors. That's the double root at 1, so t must be negative 5. So I know that. t is negative 5 for that bracket to have produced a 5, and I know it's upside down. So I know that k equals negative something, and that's enough to sort it out. It must be a. If you wanted to find the exact value, but it didn't matter here because they both said negative 2, you'd find that by substituting the points into that. Well, that's that point into that. You would do this. You would say, right, once you've got that's a negative 5, I'd, have, I'd put the 0, 10 into that. Y would be 10 when x is 0. Now, x is 0 makes that a negative 1 squared, which is a 1. x is 0, remember that's minus 5, would make that a negative 5. Negative 5k equals 10. So k equals negative 2. But if you knew your graphs, you would know that that's an upside down cubic one. So it would have to be negative x cubed. So k would have to be negative. 17. Right. There's a formula here. It's got a quadratic. It says s of t. That could be a distance formula. But it just says, what's the rate of change of s with respect to t when t is 3? Well, the rate of change of s with respect to t. That's the derivative. So that'll be 2t minus 5. What's the actual value when you put 3 into that? That'll be 2 times 3, minus 5. 6 minus 5, 1. 1, answer B. Number 18, a quadratic inequation. Watch inequations if they're not just simple linear ones. <coughs> you have to consider the graphs. What does the graph of this look like? And identify where it cuts the axis, because that's the transition. Because you'll either want the part above the axis, that's the positive parts of the part below. So what I'll do with this, this thing then is, I think first of all I'll just factorise to find where these two parts are. I'll actually, instead, I'm, I know it's an equation, but I'll solve the equation first of all. So I've got x times x plus 4 equals 0, so x equals 0 or negative 4. That tells me the graph of this will cut at 0 and negative 4. It's a positive x squared, so it comes through it like this. And the parts that I want, I just identify now, are I want the parts that give me positive answers. So it's these parts. 
I want it, and it just says greater than, doesn't include it, so I want it to be greater than 0 or any x less than negative 4. So that's my answers. x has to be less than negative 4 or x has to be greater than 0. So which one says that? x is, has to be less than negative 4, that's b, and greater than 0. So 18 is b. Right, number 19. The diagram shows this graph and it says it's a logarithmic function. What is that function? So it's going to be y equals log base something of x with something. You can see it's been shifted. A log graph should cut at 1 and it's not allowed to pass the y-axis. That's what this dotted line is for. That's the new boundary of the log. It can't get through there. That should be exactly one behind the crossing point, but it doesn't ask about that. So you know it should have been at 1. It's been shifted forward 3 then. So you put x minus the 3. It's almost the opposite of what it says in the bracket for the horizontal moves. The second bit would be, well, what's the base? Well, you can either think it's been shifted forward 3, so moving it back 3 would make, put that point back to 3, 1 which would make it base 3. If you're not happy with that, you could just put the figures in. It says y should be 1, I'll just put b for the base, when x is 6. So that says log base b of 3 equals 1, which means that, either thinking of what does that mean, what power of this, so that's power 1 of that gives 3, so that must be 3, or just take it over. 3 is, take the b over, b to the power 1. Opposite, the inverse function to log base b is the exponential b to the power. So b equals 3. So the graph is y equals log base 3 of x minus 3. Log base 3 of x minus 3, c. Right, this graph shows the result of a transformation that's already taken place. It's the other way around this time. It's wanting to ask, where was it before? So this has already happened. You've already done this. You've already dropped it down 3. And the 2x means and squashed it up by 2. So you need to undo those things to get back. So you only have to stretch it out by 2 and then lift it up 3. Well, the stretching out affects the x-coordinate. If that distance is 6, when you stretch it out to, by 2, it'll go to 12. The 3 affects the answers because it happens after the function is evaluated. You took 3 off it, so putting it back, add 3 onto it. So the 4 goes up to 7. So that becomes 12, 7, so the answer would have been A.